Windows 10 home users will not be able to turn off automatic updates. We now know this for sure. It's been rumored for a long time. Uh, and it seemed like it was probably true. And guess what? No surprise it is. Build 10.2.4.0 of Windows 10's Insider Preview has finalized settings and terms of service. Tim Anderson over at the register spotted a line in the terms that says... By accepting this agreement, you agree to receive these types of automatic updates without any additional notice. Architect connotes that Windows Pro users will get a little more leeway, seemingly around eight months, to be able to delay updates, and enterprise users can delay them for several years if they wish. Uh, Patrick and I are going to talk about that a little more, as well as uh, his impressions of Windows 10, because you, you've been uh, using it for a while now, right? Uh, it's been my, my primary operating system on my primary laptop since technical preview started. Living with it. Each and every day in my face. The Verge reports that Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced a $10,000 firmware upgrade to the P85D Model S electric sedan called ludicrous mode the upgrade will allow the electric car to go from zero to 60 seconds i'm sorry go from zero to 60 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds with 1.1 g's it's 1.1 g's of force car will achieve 155 miles per hour 20 percent faster than an unupgraded p85d must describe the acceleration as faster than falling I, I, depends on how much. Well, no, I guess a feather, and I know we proved that you fall the same rate. Anyway, there's also a battery pack upgrade from 85 kilowatt hours to 90 kilowatt hours, and a rear wheel drive Model S 70 available for $70,000. But seriously, Musk announced the Tesla P85D gets ludicrous speed. <gasps> and lest you think Tesla was not in on their own joke, from the press release, quote, there is, of course, one speed faster than Ludacris, but that is reserved for the next generation Roadster in four years, Maximum Plaid. Nice. Uh, they love their space balls over there. They were also playing the, uh, the musician Ludacris during the hold music for the press conference as well. Hmm. Would you, would you upgrade? Would you want this? I guess if you're going to spend money on a speedster if, car like this, why not? If you've already dropped $100,000, it's, it's funny because... I've gotten so used to seeing Tesla S's because they are so common in, in this part of California, in the Bay Area. And then on top of that, uh, over by Richmond's, uh, over by the warehouse in Richmond, the Hack 5 warehouse, is one of the primary uh, ports of entry for, like, you know, you'll drive down the right street and you'll see a lot filled with like, every Subaru Impreza that's going to the United <laughs> States, it seems like, from Japan. And, and there's constantly, I'll look up and I'll see, uh, as I'm driving to the office there, uh, a, an entire uh, tractor trailer load of Tesla S's that are being shipped overseas. But the people, everybody who owns a Tesla S, they seem to come into sort of two categories. The people who bought it because they believe, like, you know, it's a superior automobile and it's a striking opportunity to show green they are. Plus, they get to be really, really cool because it's really, really fast. And then there's the people who just want to drive it like a teenager trying to get, I can't say that word on a family-friendly podcast on Friday night. Um, friends. Friends. <laughs> trying to make Friends. <laughs> on Friday night, and I can totally see, you know, they're 100000 into the car with the super battery pack and everything. They'll drop another $10,000 to make it faster. Yeah. You know, especially if it Just comes with a little, yeah, a little extra badge on the, you know, that would be perfect if it was like $10,000 for a little bit of code and like one letter they could and add. A decal, to the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fact, Reddit's sure make up their own decals. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sure. Reddit's co-founder and CEO Steve Huffman conducted an Ask Me Anything yesterday, posting some details of new policies. Uh, the following will not be allowed on Reddit. Some of these were already not allowed on Reddit, but here's the complete list now. Spam, anything illegal, publication of private and confidential information, inciting harm or violence, harassment, bullying and sexually suggestive content featuring minors certain offensive or adult subreddits will be reclassified carrying a warning and either requiring opt-in or requiring you to log in or possibly logging in is the opt-in uh there's the little confusion about how this reclassification is going to work but uh, that's that's what he said well but it also it seemed like he said that and then he said any of this or none of this could actually happen <laughs> well, to any given subreddit is the way I took it, but now that you say that, you're right. Yeah. Like he, It isn't the actual terms. It's not a policy post. This is his answers in the AMA. And, and as right. you might expect, some people not satisfied with his answers, and, and other people are. Uh, but 
there you go. That's the latest in the ever never-ending saga of Reddit and its users. Uh, in a blog post yesterday, Google announced one of its self-driving cars got into its first injury accident, minor injury, a bit of minor whiplash, uh, both to the people in the self-driving car and the car that hit it, according to Ars Technica. The July 1st accident is Google's 14th self-driving car accident since 2009, which probably my, per miles driven is, is still under what the general populace experiences. And they've all been the fault of other drivers. Chris Ermson, the head of self-driving car team, wrote the Google car was rear-ended at 17 miles per hour. It was waiting at a stoplight. I don't, I don't think that's the Google car's fault. <laughs> no. Uh, it is amazing how many of these, not all of them, but the majority of these accidents are being rear-ended by someone else who failed to stop in time. Uh, and and they're and they're not the sort of thing. I mean, being rear-ended is always the other driver's fault, right? That's just right. A, 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 the way it goes. But they don't seem to be like, oh, the Google self-driving car came to a sudden and unexpected stop. They're usually like gradually slowing down, and the other person just isn't right. paying attention. I think that happens a lot. Yes, I I, I see at least one rear-ended car probably every other day on on 80 or 880. Uh, and it's usually like a caved-in rear end of the car where traffic's moving and somebody yeah, is yeah. texting or playing games in their Apple Watch or thinking or about music about the ennui of life. Or and Windows 10 and whether or not they can handle <laughs> it. It's automatically there was a There was an accident right in front of my house just before the show. Somebody wasn't paying attention and somebody else turning off into the, the you know, this, this sort of thing happens. But it makes news when it's a self-driving car. PC Mag reports that overall spam rates have dropped below 50%. The last time this happened, Patrick Norton, you and I were employees of Vulcan Ventures at Tech TV. <laughs> it was 12 years ago. According to Symantec, the rate of unwanted emails reached 49.7%. .7%, and the last time the rate was so low was September 2003. Wow. Now, uh, I don't know if you've peaked, if, <laughs> but pretend you haven't. What do you think the industry with the highest rate of spam email sent is? Uh, man, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be hair loss, uh, erectile dysfunction, or just uh, spear phishing to steal. You were closest when you said man, because it's mining. <laughs> really? Yeah, mining. Mining? Yeah. I guess people in mining are, are less discriminating about what kind of emails they click on. I don't know. Mining spam. I'm hoping to find samples now. The BBC reports that two British MPs have won a high court battle over laws which require businesses to keep records on data and phone calls and then allow law enforcement to review those records for, of suspected criminals. David Davis and Tom Watson argued that the Data Retention and Investigatory Powers Act was incompatible with human rights. The high court found aspects of the law breached Articles 7 and 8 of the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, and the ruling effectively nullifies aspects of the legislation, although the order has been suspended until next March. Her Majesty's government will appeal the ruling. BizTech Africa notes that the Botswana Institute for Technology Research and Innovation, or BITRI, is conducting a nanotechnology challenge. People in Botswana have until July 31st to submit a suggested translation of the term nanotechnology into a Setswana word or phrase. The program is meant to raise awareness of nanotechnology, and winners will receive tablets. Do you think somebody could win by just spelling nanotechnology more Setswana-friendly? and just say, we should really just call it nanotechnology. Because <laughs> the French do this, right? They're like, it's not a computer, it's an ordinateur. And I'm like, well, okay, we borrow words from other people's languages in English all the time. No, you borrow languages for English. The French, they do not borrow other people's they do not, words. No. And I guess Setswana doesn't either. But I, I actually do think this is really cool, the idea of, of having a, a, a native language-specific contest to get people interested in anything like nanotechnology is pretty awesome. Huh. Time now for our news from you section. Many of the stories you've already heard were submitted in our subreddit, including the Windows 10 one at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. And we got a couple more. Complex One sent us this story. A U.S. federal judge ruled that internet-based video streaming service Filmon is entitled to the same compulsory copyright licenses that cable systems get, according to Ars Technica. Aereo 
if you recall, lost a similar case when it made the same arguments in court last year. Not the Supreme Court case that shut them down, but a different case where they tried to get the rights to stream through this method. U.S. District Court Judge George Wu acknowledged that his preliminary decision is in direct conflict with the Second Circuit, and he said he'll allow an immediate appeal to the Ninth Circuit. The TV broadcasters who sued Film On for copyright infringement, which include all four major television networks in the U.S., are pretty much certain to appeal. But this is a weird bit of U.S. law where... You, a, a cable system can't be denied the right to carry broadcast networks unless the broadcast networks want to charge, in which case there are certain rules about how negotiations can happen in a reasonable manner to agree on a reasonable fee. That's why you still see like CBS and Time Warner get in a fight over carriage and CBS goes off Time Warner for a while because they're having that fight. But there are rules about that fight and what Film On wants and what Aria wanted was to be under those rules and be able to say, no, you have to let us stream you in a reasonable manner. That seems, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, there's part of me wants to get excited about this stuff working the way it's supposed to. And the other part of me is like, you know, I'm never going to have cable again, so whatever. <laughs> well, but yeah, I mean, think of it. I mean, CBS is already, some of this is going to go away. This is kind of a temporary legal challenge that won't really matter because uh, CBS is already streaming their their service. Uh, and PlayStation View has local channels. So a right. lot of this is being worked out in the marketplace anyway. But what companies are trying to say is, well, why should there be one set of rules for people with round wires and another set of rules for people with flat wires? They're all just wires carrying a signal. No, those wires are their wires. These wires are our <laughs> wires, and we want to charge whatever we want, no matter what the... You know who... That FCC? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you know what? None of the broadcast networks own the... Well, hold on. I guess <laughs> uh, Comcast does own NBC, so I take that back. Mm -hmm. hmm. GA Corley posted the Ars Technica write-up of a paper published in Nature Climate Change confirming that the cost of lithium-ion battery packs is falling. Cost of producing battery packs fell faster than projected from $1,000 per kilowatt hour in 2007 to $450 per kilowatt hour in 2014 wow. and continues to fall. The largest manufacturers are creating the packs at $300 dollars per kilowatt hour because they could do it at scale costs of battery packs would need to fall they estimate to around 150 dollars per kilowatt hour to become cost competitive with internal combustion both for vehicles or power generators the authors of the paper estimate that that probably won't happen until after 2020 so even as fast as they're falling they're not falling quite fast enough for that did you guys talk about the study that came out this week that looked at almost at a, not almost at a county level a bunch of researchers went through it and looked at how green uh, electric cars are based on the primary source of electricity in an area yeah yeah and we did not talk about that but I saw that article it was fascinating yeah it was uh, yeah your electric car may not be so green uh, uh, your electric car is likely not to be very green depending on where you live yeah uh, and it's funny like uh, ironically like Texas and L.A., parts of Texas and L.A. are the places where it's almost undoubtedly more green. And then the rest of the country, it's highly questionable. Yeah. Um, there it is. Life cycle air quality impacts of conventional and alternative light duty transportation in the United States. Man, that just rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> but I, I love the idea that these electric batteries are falling in price because there's so many things. Yeah. I mean, cars are definitely a big thing you can do with them, but there's also the power wall from Tesla, uh, you know, being able to create all kinds of, of, of power uh, uh, power options through that. So yeah, hey, thanks mm -hmm. for putting that in the show notes. You know, now that we actually embed the Google Doc in the blog post, you putting that link in the show notes will now make it available for everyone as soon as we post this. I'm a giver. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a look at